Okay. So I will absolutely address any concerns you have on the unit assignment. I forecast that I will probably take up about 10 minutes just directing our attention at a couple things in the green packet and just letting us know that I did include more in our unit packet than we are accountable for. So as long as we're delivering this, we're so good to go. So if we kind of have everything kind of handy or just, of course, pay attention to what I'm uh, focusing on. So if you have any questions on unit assignment, if you could just hang on to those, I'd like to first take a look at some kind of jokes that will then funnel us into the green packet. And then I'll bring some things to our attention in the unit packet that don't worry if you take a look at that and think, oh, there's like a couple pages we didn't address, no worries at all. Room and floor is open to any of your questions, including the questions we were looking at yesterday. All right, so the jokes on entropy are plentiful. So in answer to Maya's memes, there was even a distortion on that same sodium chloride water joke of the guy looking back at the other girl, but it wasn't so good. Well, that was good then, but someone tried to do like a thermodynamic spin, not so good, not worth, with, worth sharing for us. Okay, so there's a little joke, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> I like that. Don't worry so much about the equation. That's kind of like higher level thermodynamics, sort of, but it's really uh, the, the change in entropy of the system and then is change in entropy of the surroundings versus anyway, anyway, anyway I think that's fine. I know it, especially because it's like Grim Reaper, like what? I know, kind of depressing. But I embody entropy every single day for you. The other day, I was getting out of my car, holding a cup of coffee. How on earth did I bump the steering wheel as I was getting out of the car? But you can just imagine, because silly me thought, I'm fine without a lid on my coffee cup. So you can imagine the uh, fulfilling of the second law that I delivered. Okay, so. Lord of the Rings. You will pass. It's not a you shall not pass, but this isn't necessarily like, you know, easy peasy. We just have to make sure we're confident. So that will transition us into our green packet. Zach. I just wanted to share very quickly. <laughs> I was looking at this like medical school, so just like um, admissions requirements, you know, last few years in college. And um, just I chose Harvard Medical School just because I went to like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I was like, if they take the requirement, then I bet everyone else would. So that's why. But I thought it was really interesting. That, um, out of all the classes that you are required to take in college, the only like AP class that they'll actually accept is AP Chem. So, wow. Uh, nope, they don't, they won't take it. The only one they'll take is AP Chem. Uh, good. Okay, what it. have I been saying? Not a surprise to me. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it's also a requirement for Harvard Medical School AP Say that one more time. I was having to read a lot again. I know. Say it one more time. AP Chem fulfills the chemistry requirement for Harvard Medical School. We should we should pull that for the computer. So you are in, you're in the right place. It is challenging, but also also working. All right. Thank you, Zach. I thought you were going to say was a, a thermodynamic course. Okay. So um, if we could, in our green packet, Porter, do you have an interesting observation, sir? 
I just wasn't scheduled to take this class at the end of the year last year. And then Mr. Servanak, he goes to the same gym as me, can miss me. <laughs> I must say, it, oh, we could we could like talk for days about Mr. Servanak, same gym as me, like the layers that are embedded in that. Like, oh my gosh! And what was his reasoning? Uh, he just said it was like an important class. I think I think his son took it wrong. Yep, and daughter. Yep. I was blessed to teach his two sons and daughter. Yep, 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 yep. Great. And of course, you're like, oh, brilliant man. All right. In the very back of your green packet, there is this bluffer's guide. I've shared it a couple of times with us, and it usually is just a one or two page. And this is just a one pager summary. And so I definitely encourage us. You know, this is kind of a one-stop shop about what we need. Um, and then I kind of merged some good things on the next two pages. All right. But something that I know I have not emphasized. If I share a crystal story really, really quickly, because I think you can tell that it scarred me. You know, when you're little, and you know everything because you're you're young, and I'm talking about probably I was six or seven, if I'm not mistaken. You know you're small in stature. Not that I've grown that much since then, but everything is just bigger. And so when you return to your childhood home, or how about if you would go to visit Bower Hill or Pleasant Valley, isn't everything like oh, so much smaller? Okay, so I understand in my head that I make it to be like Mount Everest. Meanwhile, a couple of years ago, I drove my, my childhood home and I thought like, that's the hill that I was worried about. So I was privileged to grow up in a town that was on the uh, outside of Brownsville, Pennsylvania called Grindstone. And we lived in this small little house and there was a church across the street, but Route 40, which in this area of Southwestern PA, Route 40 is like the road that connects all these little, little communities. And there's not a lot of police in that area. So people speed like crazy. So that was like always the danger zone. My mom was always like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, make sure you don't go near the road. But I never had to worry because we had this like driveway and there was this big hill. So I always knew, oh, there's no way. Cause I just know like, okay, just play around the house. Totally good, totally good. Well, I remember I was trying to learn how to ride my bike, my pink bike with like the, you know, uh, fringe on the handles. I was like so jazzy without training wheels. And my dad just thought like, okay, we're just gonna, yeah, exactly. So me, I'm like, don't let go, don't let go. He's like, you'll just go down the hill. That'll like teach you. So as a kid, and I'm thinking this is like, you know, I'm looking down 90 degrees, this hill. Oh, God. Oh, my gosh. What a little mini hill. But there I am on my bike. Like, Dad, don't let go. Dad, let, let go. And then he just gave me a good push. Now, I must say, like, years. <laughs> because, of course, I'm thinking, like, the road! The road! But my dad knew, okay, even if that girl somehow stays on the two wheels upright, that she'll not make it up to the road because there's this gully here. So maybe she'll like, you know, go up a little, but eventually she's going to end up in that gully. So my dad wasn't a bad dad. He just scared the living daylights out of me. I don't remember. I just remember like being in fear if that got me to do it or not. No clue. But anyway, um, so if we take a look at, at this diagram, and if we look, it's just free energy. So, reactant to product. All right, my honor students have not yet even contemplated the idea of equilibrium. They're just pretty sure that when reactants react, you just have product. Now, of course, we could have a limiting reactant, so we have an excess reactant, so we have a little bit of reactant left over, but none of this going back and forth. Wow, they just think, okay, reactant, product, we're done. 
but we know, oh, that we can have a, a different ratio of both and we can be favoring product or favoring reactant. But why? Why? Because we're saying, okay, that we are definitely favored in the forward or the reverse direction or not favored in the forward. Well, then what explains equilibrium and equilibrium position? And so a thermodynamic chemist would say, well, that is the position of lowest free energy. Ideally, zero. Huh? Ideally, zero or oddly gosh darn close to it. So just like <laughs> my dad, I thought I was a goner and be like a squish frog on the, the road. But my dad knew, oh no, she's going to end up there. That's where we find. And of course, are we more reactant favored or more product favored? This is slightly more product favored. Yeah. Okay. So um, you might see some things in your packet regarding that, but that's just to bring that to our attention. Okay. What I would like to do is take a look at before the bluffers guide. So if you found the last couple of pages, bluffers guide, but the page before. All right. Are we certain? Are we certain about the interpretation of our signs of S, H, and G? So if we could just focus on enthalpy first, enthalpy first, and we got good at that in unit six. All right. I don't even have to insult you out loud. So let's see. I'm gonna, I should have darkened in these. All right. So if delta H is positive, endothermic. If it's endo, and then of course, exo and exo, right? And we're from the perspective of the system. All right. Okay. So new for us is entropy. New for us is entropy. All right. So if I'm going to put one word to describe the interpretation of positive delta S, it would be one or two words. What do you guys like? Okay. Now we want, if we are interpreting what sign do we want on entropy to favor thermodynamic favorability, then we want it to be positive. But if it's positive, what does that tell us? So just like here, Sarah, um, it, it, we know thermodynamically, we want to be exothermic, but this is what I'm after as far as meaning. So when it's negative, that means it's exothermic. So when delta S is positive, that means here we are confident with this data and information and content it'll just be too loud if we say it together Eddie. so okay i am so sorry if i've been jumbling this okay H is enthalpy, heat at constant pressure. Okay, if we analyze a process and the process yields a positive change in enthalpy. So we analyze, okay, what are the enthalpy of products, enthalpy of the reactants, and the products have greater gap than the reactants, then overall we have to invest more so we would just, the first interpretation we would have from the sign is endo or exo. Okay. It's a different question of what is thermodynamically favored. Okay. So Sarah. Yes, 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 yes. So this tells us the direction of heat. Is it releasing or are we inputting it? Where this is saying, 
are we increasing or decreasing disorder, positional probability, microstates? We want to get ourselves out of disorder or chaos. So dispersion, positional probability, microstates. All of that means the same stuff. So we're increasing dispersion. Again, think about all the different choices of seats that one of you could have in our new auditorium. But then if we had more of us, there'd be more number of arrangements, et cetera. That's what we're talking about. Where it's negative, we're decreasing dispersion. Okay. Okay, so that's, that's the interpretation. I hope that that, okay, so enthalpy, okay, the sign, and then what do we interpret? What conclusion, and then entropy, based upon the sign, what do we conclude? Okay, now, ideally, what we observe from our world, remember, um, science begins with an observation. So we look at things that happen without us having to continually input energy. And we find that, man, reactions that are exothermic and increased dispersion happen without us continually adding heat or you know, uh, controlling pressure or something else. So that's where we go by with thermodynamically favored. Okay, if we're thermodynamically favored, delta G is negative, yeah? Because delta G looks at delta H and delta X. It takes both into factor because there's conflict in our world. Not all exothermic reactions are thermodynamically favored. Not all that increased dispersion are thermodynamically favored. This explains why. Now, remember, if we have those floating zeros, that means standard state condition, not SPP, standard temperature and pressure. How mean that we use the same term standard? We're, of course, talking about 25 Celsius and one ATM relative room conditions. Okay, so if delta G is negative, we are moving toward product. The way it's written, however, we've established reactant is making product. But if it's positive, nope, it will not move in the forward direction. It's going to stay put in favor reactant. We have to invest energy to make it go, do some kind of work. So it's not that it's impossible. We just have to do. Okay, so if we're favoring product, we know K is greater than one. Product over reactant, and then the reverse, less than one. Okay. If we're at equilibrium, right? Teddy, didn't you say this the other day? If I'm remembering correctly, I'm so sorry if I'm Right, the earner of the Walmart, smiley, tangy flavored. That's right, aren't they? Thank you for confirming. Yeah, yeah, not messing around. Very good. Yeah. And then we're not moving more toward reactant or product, we're at equal rate. And we're not even gonna go there, totally good. Okay, so. This is where we just need to be able to, to uh, apply, okay, what does it mean with our signs knowing this? Are there any questions about the chart so far? All right. Sure, we'll get that. We'll get that now. Thank you for, thank you. Okay, so. Why don't we take care of the always favored or thermodynamic favored, always spontaneous? Well, that is gonna be, what do we want? 
We want it to be exothermic. What else? We want to increase dispersion. So we know this is Calvin. This is always going to be a positive collective term. So we're taking negative minus positive, more negative. Okay, so when we're negative and positive, they imp ooh, we are always favored. So delta G will be negative, which means thermodynamically favored. And so both things here, Sarah, both when our enthalpy is negative and our entropy change is positive, they both are helping to make delta G negative. So um, both, both, both. I know. So it's just giving another option. If it's not enthalpy, if it's not entropy, well, then it's neither. But this will be both. So it's S and H. Yes. So it's just whatever is falling away from the delta G thing. You got it. Yep. And any temperature is going to be fine. Huh? Okay. And when is it just hopeless? It is absolutely always going to have to be work on our part, Leah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, uh, nope. uh, not thermodynamically favored. Uh, no, uh, no impact, temperature has no impact. And uh, neither, they're both working against us. Yes. So when we're talking about entropy, are we talking about like still an entropy for the yeah. The products after the reaction of the yes. Okay. Yes. And of course, if we're more like product favored, then we're kind of just emphasizing product. It, it's more that we are like favoring product for that evaluation. I'm sorry. If it's thermodynamically favored. Yeah, we're gonna, we're definitely gonna have a little more product per the K expression, a little more water, we could say, in the product bin versus the reactant bin. Yep. And so it's where temperature can make a difference. Okay, so in this first, that's where endothermic is working against us. So to get entropy to drive, we need high temperature and, and quote unquote, high temperature. Hundreds of, hundreds and hundreds usually of degrees. Um, and then uh, that's gonna make this negative. So it's just saying like, we can't really say because we don't know the temperature. Um, and so uh, it'll be enthalpy driven if we're at quote unquote low temperature to make this term be small enough, if this is negative, it's gonna make this term positive. So yeah. Okay, so do we ourselves, do we ourselves, just could read my brain. Um, could, could we say, oh, bring it on. Really the most important thing. Here. Oh, <laughs> I guess that was our bells. I'm so sorry. I thought that was some. Oh, sure. <laughs> Rebooting. Yeah. Okay. So where are we? Scale of one, I'm so lost. Five, I could teach this to my parents. Is that, or to my dog? Alexa, you know. I don't know what, uh, uh, to my friend, to my whatever. Okay, so are we at least at a four? Okay, what can I do? So if it's positive, negative. And of course, uh, 
zero is a possibility. Uh, we're not really ever gonna be zero there because I mean, there could be like seemingly no increase or decrease that we can predict, but if we actually numerically found it. <laughs> I don't know. At least I, that is super creepy. I know. I'd rather like the more computerized voice, I guess. Yeah, like creepy, like futuristic, you're being controlled. Yeah. Uh, all right. Um, so how about employing our equation? So some things that we could get tripped up on, units. Units, especially here, where your entropy is going to be in joules per mole Kelvin and uh, guarantee that your enthalpy will be in kilojoules. So just being careful. I will give you all of these equations as well as the value of R. Also, how many of us yesterday got tripped up if we were trying to find K so we're just naturally in the habit of doing logarithms because of all our pH work and so on. So natural log, be careful. And the same sig fig guideline applies just so you know, let you know. When you perform a natural log, you increase sig figs by one, undo, you decrease sig figs by one. Okay, so we have, all I can say is it, there are pages in here that, don't, don't worry. If we can answer, go back and look at what we've done in class. But if we can answer the questions on your assignment, we're more than fine for tomorrow. I'll give us associated equations, value of R, any thermodynamic constant values that we need. So Gibbs free energy information, uh, enthalpies of formation and absolute entropies. There are Oh, please forgive me if I'm not remembering exactly. Eight or 10 model choice. Just like these, just like these. And one free response. It'll have multiple parts. So what I asked you to do yesterday, that, you know, you're given information and might need to get your change in enthalpy. And then you're given absolute entropies and so on. Okay, yes. I will definitely give us the time that we need. I think one period will suffice to answer. Now, of course, if we're thinking like, wait, what is entropy? What is S? Wait, what? Which I know we won't be in that situation. So um, I think we'll have no problem finishing in one period. But if we need to work a little bit into the second, I don't think we will. Because I think these are kind of like, you think on it, but you kind of, you know, uh, about a minute or two. So if we say 20 minutes for mobile choice, two, two minutes each, and then uh, 20 minutes for the free response that has, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, A, B, C, and D. Good. Alexa. Oh, no worries at all. Okay. So. Do we want to go ahead and segment if we want to answer this, check in with each other, ask me anything on our unit assignment? You are free. I have additional keys for these. If anyone would like to raise one just in case, if you didn't get to check your mobile choice or your response yesterday, but not required in any way, shape, or form. Okay. So. Let me know if I can address something for you. Yes. 